And we're going to gather some GC mass spec data on the various products from the Bormination Lab. So I've gathered one of these GC mass spec uh, sample racks, starting with one here through five. And I'm just going to put my samples, 48A, 49A, 49B, and 59A in slots one through four respectively. And I also need to fill the wash bottle for methanol so that the syringe can be rinsed with methanol in between each analysis. And then we'll go set up a batch file to run these four samples. That's just methanol. I can reuse that pipette. I'm going to take my methanol wash bottle and my GC mass spec rack over to the instrument. And I'll put this in slot one. So it really does correspond to samples one through four. And then the methanol goes here, that's solvent A. Solvent B is dichloromethane. I'll need to refill that. And solvent C is a pseudonatrile, so we'll just reset that guy. That should be ready to go. And now we need to sit at the instrument and set up our analysis. So I will change the camera angle. Hopefully pointing at the screen. You can see what I'm doing. Hopefully. So we are at the top menu here. And we want to do a batch file, so we're going to click on batch processing. And right now there's an old batch file in there. So I'm going to go file, new batch file. And it's opening up a batch file that's automatically set for the dehydration lab that we did earlier in the semester. Uh, that's not what I want. I'm going to delete the row by right clicking. So I delete everything below the first four. And so then under vial number, I'm, I'm in one, two, three, and four. So I want to highlight all of that and put in my lot number. So we have 48A, first piece of data on that, dash one. I'm going to delete these sample IDs. We don't really need a sample ID since we're not running a time point. So I don't even need that column. And I could go to table style here and tell it that I really don't need the sample ID at all. Let me delete that row, that column. Right, so we don't have it at all. I'm going to save this batch file before I forget. And put it in my folder and call it Bromination Batch. Arch. So then I need to give it file names, and I want to put them in the data folder in my folder. And I have under GC mass spec a 2021 labs folder, and then I've got to give it a file name. And this would be the acetanolate, we hope. So under data description, acetanilid from reaction of aniline with acetic anhydride. Point 0.1 microliter injection volume is correct. The method that we want to use is actually under my own folder. Under GC mass spec in those 2021 labs, it's called Bromination 2021. And we're actually just going to 
copy and paste that method down into the other four, hopefully. Now it's misbehaving. It's being a pain in the ass. Well, let's check the tuning file, and then we'll worry about it. 3.17.19 is the most recent date on the tuning file, so that's good. Now I want to take this and select the entire column. There we go. Control-C. And put that in the other rows. And then we have 49A. Which we hope is the crude Acetanolid. And then we have forty nine B. set to point somewhere that's not where I'm going, which is why I have to keep clicking. So this is recrystallized from O acetanolid. And that's batch one. So I'll put a Roman number one on it. And for this other one, it's recrystallized batch two. DCL dash ten dash fifty nine A dash one. So under data description, this is the product of rumination of acetanolid, with sodium bromide and ABR and sodium hypochlorite in a OCl. And then this third sample is bromoacetanolid recrystallized from 50% aqueous ethanol. This other sample is bromoacetanolid recrystallized from 25% ethanol, 75% water. Just making sure that I have my vial numbers correct, 48A, 49A, 49B, and 59A. I'll double check and make sure those are where I actually put them. 48A, 49A, 49B, and 59A. My file names look good, crude and purified. I've got my data description in there, the injection volumes, and the tuning file, everything's correct. So we'll delete those last two rows. Right click, delete row. I'm going to save that batch file. And then we can click start. And I had this equilibrating so that the uh, instrument was ready to go already at the correct flow rates and temperatures. And as soon as it starts to run, we'll take a look at what those settings are.
So we have our batch file running, the syringes or the auto sampler is grabbing the first sample. Dragging that over. And then you'll see that the syringe will go to that first solvent where we filled it with methanol and start washing the syringe with methanol. So we'll let that go. And let's take a look at our method detail. And you can see that we have that sampler set to wash twice with solvent before the run and twice after the run and twice with the sample. So we're being very consistent. And then under the advanced tab, I have it washing with only A, which is just the methanol. It's gonna go all the way to the bottom, syringe injection position and suction position are both at zero milliliters. And it's gonna pump twice to get rid of air bubbles. So everything's set at two. Under GC, you'll see the initial column oven temperature is 80, and we're gonna hold for two and a half minutes at 80, and then rise fairly rapidly at 30 degrees C per minute until we hit 245, and then hold for two minutes. So this is a 10 minute run. We're using the same MS column we always do, that SHRXI5 SIL, mass spec version, 5% diphenyl, 95% dimethyl polysiloxane, standard 30 meter by 0.25 millimeter diameter column with a 0.25 micrometer film thickness. And our pressure is at 80.7 kilopascals. I know the insert counter warning. We're running a split ratio of 25 and a column flow rate of 1.19 milliliters per minute at this temperature, which corresponds to 40.3 centimeters per second. Under the mass spec tab, we've got a solvent cut time of two minutes where the methanol will come off and then we're collecting data from 2.1 to 10 minutes at a molecular weight range from 50 to 400. The interface is at 280 and the ion source is at 200. And I forgot to mention that the injection port temperature is also at 280. That's also over here. SPL1 is the injection port temperature. IF is interface. Those are both at 280. The column oven starts at 80 and the ion source at 200. So there's a quick cheat and then the pressure at 81 and the 31 at the total flow, which you can find, right? That's 31 mil per minute total flow, but only 1.19 mil per minute column flow because of the split. So you can get that data over here as well. So that's gonna run and we're just gonna let that go and uh, go do something else while that batch is running. It's gonna take uh, 40 minutes plus the reset time when it cools back down from the 245 degrees to 80. So we gotta probably a little less than an hour to uh, wait before this data comes up.